Yeah, <gasps> oh, look at you, so <gasps> precious. <Aww. laughs> Welcome to the Vang. I am Tanea. And I am Blanc. And this is part two of our birth story. Y'all wanted it, we got it. Yes. The nurses came in and they talked to an OB team. Uh, originally, I had a midwife. They talked to the OB team to suggest a uh, C section. Right. And that's where the tables turn. I kind of felt, um, not in this moment, to be honest, I felt before this moment, if I ever had to do a C section, that it I was a I almost felt like a failure that I couldn't do it vaginally mm. but um, at this moment I had so much peace I said you know what they said we could wait longer where the c-section would be an emergency right or we could do it now where it's just urgent and we can take our time getting the baby out and right. I said c-section yeah that broke my heart because I for one I wasn't prepared for it i know you were because you know i wasn't but, but every like you, book that they gave me i read pat i didn't even read the c-section part because i'm like i ain't getting no c-section yeah i was struggling <laughs> because you know like i was saying i i never had c-section on the back of my mind because in my mind it was just oh we're gonna have a vaginal birth and that's it c-section i knew was a thing but i guess for us it was just i never thought about it and then when it happened, it scared the crap out of me. I was he praying. was so worried. And I, I was praying so hard. Yo, I was legit in tears, man, because I was like, they're going to cut my wife open to bring mm -hmm. this baby out. So here's 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 a dilemma here. So the OB team's like, okay, if she says, okay, we're going to do it. But then there was an obstetrician, a mm -hmm. gynecologist that right. came in. And she came up to me. What did she ask me? Well, how many kids do you plan on having? And I looked at her and I'm like, what? <laughs> I looked at Peter. I said, a couple more. And she's like, well, are you going to have like 10? And I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, I am 30 years old. What do I look like well, having kids till I'm 40? It's, it's funny because even all the nurses kind of looked at her. The nurses like, was like, what is she doing? And yeah. I said, no. She's like, five? And I'm like, I don't know. And, and then. Like, like, can we get through this one? Yeah, I'm like, where do you, where do you getting at? And she's right. like, well. Because she basically made it sound like I couldn't have a um, C-sections do so much wear and tear on the body that having more kids would be more difficult for me. Right. And I'm in my head, I'm like, I know there's vaginal birth after C-sections. Boy, bye. <laughs> so um, she's like, well, we could wait longer for your contractions and we could put a balloon up there and it'll help relieve the pressure on the baby. And I'm looking at her like, give me the C-section. <laughs> I'm not putting, I'm not waiting longer in labor. Yeah. So what, so we can see my child almost dies and then it's emergency? No. Oh, let's... So... Let's explain why we're having a C-section. That's what we're doing right now. Oh, okay. They started prepping oh. me for pre-op. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize to go into... Um, to go into the labor room, you legit have to gear up. Like you gotta do pre mass. Pre-op, not labor. Pre-op. Pre-op? Oh, yeah. it's only for pre-op? We were already in the labor room. Oh, okay. So if it wasn't for the C-section, you would have had it there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes Okay, so pre-op, you have to gear up no matter what. So they put us in the bunny suits. Okay. Yeah. And I actually have a photo of Peter. <laughs> Picture right here, here, and Just here. Just one photo. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, I, I didn't know you had to put all that on. So, you know, the, the, we're joking, cracking jokes with the nurse. She's like, yeah, a lot of people kind of... They take pictures and they're always laughing about it. But yeah, you got to put this full suit on. And I, I legit look like I was... About to go cook crack and like breaking bad or something, man. Meth. It was meth. <laughs> Cooking but, meth and breaking bad. Like it, it yeah. was it, it was an experience. So Yeah. So they took out the monitor out and I actually checked my cervix at the same time. So they right. didn't want to check my cervix too much because my water had already broke mm -hmm. and they didn't want to cause any infections in there. Right. So at this time I was three, four centimeters. That ain't jack. No, for his laboring as long as I was laboring. Yet, but I would have to say, although the contractions were getting heavier, they still did not have anything on my menstrual cramps. <laughs> they were heavy. They were they were um painful, but my menstrual cramps had been whoo yeah. stuck on the bed shaking type and that was not anything compared to that. They're uh, rolling me into the anesthesiologist's right. place. Mind you, I had already asked all the questions, what they got to put in me, mm -hmm. how long am I going to be out, do I right. got to go to sleep? And then we get in there, and they had me arching my back so that they could get the bone in my, the bones in my spine to put needles in. He missed <laughs> like three or four times, and I could feel each one, and I had to tell him where I could feel them at the same time. They said you're going to be having contractions while they're trying to, I call it a spinal Ouch. tap. I don't know what it really is. 
um, while they're trying to do the needles in your back. And thank God, literally thank God, I did not have one contraction while they were doing hmm. the needles in my back. And as soon as they finally got the needle in where it was supposed to be. And so when they laid me down, they're doing the iodine to um, clean me off. And shes I could see her working on my stomach and couldn't feel not a thing. And that was the weirdest sensation ever. And then all of a sudden, I didn't even know they cut me open until you said something. Yeah, so from there, I was... They have the surgery room and they got the waiting room outside, but it's blocked by a door. So you can't get into this door to get into the surgery room. So I'm out there and I'm just pacing. I get out the room. I'm walking back and forth. Nobody is in this lobby for some reason. So I'm walking back and forth, back and forth, praying so hard, man. I'm back and forth. Just I didn't praying. Know you were praying. Oh, heck yeah. I was praying throughout that whole hospital, but I was just, you know, telling God to just lift every day anxiety and everything I had on my shoulder. I was telling him to take it all up. You know, and like just to watch over us in this surgery, like I was freaking out. Eventually I knew it was, I was out in the waiting room a little bit too long because I'm like, okay, something doesn't seem right. And I'm like, why haven't I been in the room yet? Because they're not supposed to start surgery without me, you know? And then finally the nurse came out to go grab me like, hey, uh, you want to go back there? I was like, yeah, I do. Because I, I was trying to get into the locker room, but I couldn't because I didn't have my access card. And there was no nurse walking through at all. <laughs> he didn't have his access card. Right. Like, he worked at the hospital right. There was something. no nurse or nothing. I'm over here just freaking out. Like, yo, I, I should have went in there with her, man. I should have never let them separate us. You know, make sure you're with your partner 100% of the way, man. Don't let them separate you two. And when I walked in, surgery started already. And I'm like, yo, what's up? What did you see? When I walked in, I think they had you cut open already, but it wasn't too crazy yet. Oh, okay. I mean, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch your wife get cut open. So I wasn't trying to look at that too much because I, you know, again, I didn't prepare myself mentally for it. So like it kind of took me off guard. So then I went straight to where she was. And then I found out that you were the one who told the nurse to come grab me, huh? No, um... I didn't see any. Uh, mind you, I was I was drugged up by this point. Right. Um, no, I heard um, a doctor, the doctor that we liked, that was with us the entire time, the nurse. She said, "Can someone grab the husband?" Mm. And then um, I think her name was Rachel. Okay. And then they grabbed you, but I didn't know they cut me open because I couldn't tell. Right, because she was numb. Right. How long was were they cutting me before baby came? Uh, to be honest, I can't even remember how time long stood it was. still. Yeah, but I just remember standing by her side, just talking to you. I'm like, hey, are you doing okay? And I remember you were oh so, my gosh. you were, you know, Tanae was so drowsy. She, it was kind of like she was in and out of a dream. Yeah. And then when she would, when she would connect with me again, she's like, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm just kind of tired. I'm like, hey. Oh my gosh. So I was afraid to go to sleep. So I yeah. looked at the anesthesiologist and I said, hey, uh, is it normal that I'm tired? And he's like, yeah, you've had a long day. It's okay to go to sleep. And I'm thinking in my head, I really don't want to go to sleep. Yeah. So then I, <laughs> Tanea was tired, though. But she looked like she was kind of spacing in and out. So then I was just kind of talking life into her, like, you're doing an amazing job. You're doing yeah. great. Like, yeah. how are you feeling? I remember just holding her hand, you know, just like, hey, are you doing okay? I couldn't feel that because my hands are numb. <laughs> yeah, she was like, I can't feel nothing. Yo, they said if... So if, then I smacked yeah. her and she was like, no, I can't. No, he did not. Yeah, so then I do remember looking up and just seeing... I swear it was like your belly flapped up or something. It was weird, but I remember just seeing a whole bunch of red and like, you can see the tube of the blood going into the blood chamber, and it was it was weird, man, to to see to see like I said to to have them cut your wife open just for you to just watch. Weird. It's I kinda, told them to give me a liposuction <laughs> while they was down there. <laughs> Shoot, it might as well. <laughs> so, so then. I don't know how long it had been. But by then, we, we were sitting right next to each other. And, and then we heard, the doctor, whoa. We heard, whoa. yeah, we heard, whoa, someone's alert. And like, we heard, oh my gosh, look at your eyes. You're so beautiful. Yeah. And then we hear crying. Yeah, because they haven't cut into the sack yet. And because, you know, I think when they huh? pulled the baby, wait, was the baby in the sack? No. The baby had already, like, when the baby came out, she was out the sack. Oh, okay. She didn't, oh, when she had her first breath of air, and then all of a sudden, you hear just crying i'm like <gasps> and me and Tanea looked at each other and we started crying too because like it's just it's weird because it just came out like i wasn't expecting it and then they carry the baby over to um the table the table so they can wipe instead her off instead of quick. giving me my first skin yeah to skin, like, like i said it was to. It, it was a lot of learning experience on our end so nurse number two is looking at nurse number one like hey can we bring the baby to the mom and then nurse number one is like 
she ignored her so she's still cleaning her i'm looking at her like yo like i'm like can you bring the baby to the mom and the nurse was like okay can we just stop that nurse number two was like let's bring the baby to the mom and nurse number one was like oh yeah yeah okay i'm sorry i'm like bruh what is you doing i didn't catch any of that the nurse number two wrapped the baby up and carried it over to uh, Tanea and she started crying again and then we when the skin to skin contact yo god really knew what he was doing with like skin to skin touching all that like it's crazy because the baby started crying and then she laid on Tanea and then into the well, i think you said something like Hi. i said i said nova and i said nova and then all of a sudden she stopped crying she stopped crying and she kind of looked up like I know that voice. What is that? It was the most heartwarming. Bro, I'm getting teary just thinking Ugh. about it. And then, you know, after we kind of, you know, they were, they were, they're finished with Tanea, so they're stitching her up. And they asked me like, hey dad, do you want to go into the waiting room with the baby? And I looked at Tanea and I was like, cause I didn't want to leave her. So I said, are you okay with it? And you remember you looking at me, you're like, yeah, it's okay. You can go. I'm like, are you sure? You're like, yeah. Peter, just go. I was out of it. Yeah, like, you're like, just to go. To be honest, she shouldn't even ask me. So, so then I, 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 I hold the baby, or I held the baby, and we went into the the waiting room, in the lobby, and I remember sitting there just recording her and taking pictures and just kind of looking at her like, wow, this is, like, this is for real. Everything we've been praying for is right in my hand. I'm just like staring at her like man this is real and then you know she held my finger for the first time and she she was wide awake like her eyes were just kind of open just kind of staring yeah eventually they brought Tanea into the room the waiting room post-op yeah post-op mm -hmm. the waiting room and then <laughs> it's a post-operation room it wasn't the waiting room okay the waiting room <laughs> and then um it wasn't the waiting room that's where um you know after they got Tanea settled in you know we did the first latch they tried to do the first latch. It was difficult trying to maneuver everything. I don't even know. The only reason I know that it really happened was because of the video that I saw of them <laughs> doing it. But that first latch though, when it did happen though, oh, that baby was so happy. And I remember just looking at it, I'm like, yo, this is what God meant to happen with the nature, the nature of the human body. Like it's, it's amazing, man. Just watching her latching onto you for the first time and then just, as you as a first mother and me as a first father just kind of watching like and bonding know. and like nurses were happy and they were yeah. just like you did so well mm. i didn't lose nearly as much blood as they i lost oh to the grace of god yo god was literally in that whole entire thing because that type of surgery they they almost expected me to lose blood like crazy i think he only lost 20 percent blood i remember them saying that was it 20 percent? but anyways it, it was it was below was below, it below average below average and even shocked the doctors the doctors were like like we, because did. of that they were able to stitch me up perfectly right. like you can't they, even tell i had surgery they took their like we can actually take our time because they you're took not losing their so like, time yo, and we, they oh my gosh man thank you god and thank you jesus yeah because, for putting uh, me in the hands of this doctor because this gynecologist <laughs> was way or obstetrician was way better than oh, the one man. that was questioning me about oh, kids man. but anyway so then we end up um in the uh I don't even know what this room is called, but it's the room we ended up staying in for yeah. the last, the next couple nights. That first night was actually like a dream. But yeah, every person, and you just knew that this child is just a straight gift from God. Mm -hmm. And that she's going to be so powerful in ministry and sharing God's word. Oh my yeah. gosh, I am so excited for where she's going to be. I'm telling you, her energy towards everyone is... Her spirit like... is so... <laughs> other than babies being pure in general. Right. Her, her, she is so pure and she just brought on tears to people like i've never mm, seen this before right. with babies and was i remember peter trying to feed me some monk food and what, i was what? so excited oh this is when they gave you painkillers yeah yeah they had peter to give you i've pain been killers. on painkillers the entire time <laughs> they gave you some more too though i think no it wasn't it was just in my iv oh was it okay. yeah it was just in my iv you're trying to feed me and i'm over here like yeah because i'm hungry i ain't ate since the night before mm -hmm. and i'm trying to eat and it was delicious what would I give her? I gave her... Uh, it was chicken. Chicken and sticky rice sticky from like rice. Mong Village. And, and, then, so, and then apple juice too, I believe. Did I have apple juice? Yeah, I oh, gave you Oh, because they juice. wanted to give me something to drink that wasn't water. I ate that. And then all of a sudden, Tanea started feeling nauseous. And then Got they had they had, they had little puke bags for Man. her. And um, she so started... I puked about a couple times. Yeah. And then they're talking and laughing and stuff. 
in the background while I'm over here puking, thinking, what the heck are y'all doing? Y'all don't see this? We do. With the but, baby I mean, in one arm and a puke bag in the other arm, and I'm just like... I mean, what could you do, though? Can't do know? nothing. Him in the picture of me. Yeah, apparently you can't eat solids after um, giving birth. And then that 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 uh, the drugs they have you on make you so itchy. Oh, and they're yeah. like, "Well, we can give you." Today was itching. I felt like I just I just feel it now. Like my whole back was itchy in places I couldn't even scratch. Yeah. Long story short, the first night was wonderful. I just couldn't stop staring at our baby. Yeah. And then I took a photo of the sunrise the next morning with her in the bassinet, which is what we end up sharing with everybody like a week later. But, uh, man, just that coming home feeling, man, like, nothing feels better than leaving the hospital. <laughs> nothing feels better than leaving for, the for, hospital for, those for the who, comfort yes. of your home. For those who's ever who has ever been in the hospital for a few nights and then going home, you guys know what we're talking about, man. Thank you for watching part two of our birth story. Here is baby girl Nova. No, we will not show her face. The Follow us on IG. That is do. our day-to-day, -day, almost day-to-day -day thing on uh, uh, the underscore things. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. You know, again, subscribe, follow us on every, all the social media links, and make sure you stay up to what we got going on. Okay. Feel free to leave comments. I don't know. What? <laughs> Peace. Bye.